So someone asked me recently, uh, I've been hearing a lot about mission partnerships recently, and what are they? Well, I was able to say to them, in essence, they're very simple. They're about churches working together in mission. Okay, they said, but we've heard lots of stuff about there not being as many clergy as there used to be. Isn't all that part of it as well? Well, absolutely, I said. Yes, this is part of our response to that situation. But nevertheless, I'm passionate about the fact that partnership is part of what the church is all about. Without partnership, there wouldn't be a church, and we wouldn't be involved in Christian mission. Well, they said, yes, but isn't it all then all about lots of extra meetings? If we have churches working together, there have got to be lots of extra meetings. To which I said, well, not necessarily. What we're asking churches to do is look at this really creatively and think about how churches can work together in mission in a way that fits your local context. So that's why I've asked today uh, two of our area deans uh, to say a little bit about what's happening within their own deaneries in this whole area of mission partnerships. And just quickly before I ask them so a couple of specific questions, just want to give you an update in terms of how this is progressing within the diocese. So this came from the deanery evenings. Uh, many of you who attended uh, deanery evenings will remember the bishops introducing, in particular, if we go to the next slides, uh, this picture uh, giving an idea of what mission partnerships might look like with stipendiary clergy overseeing more than one parish, but with a team of both lay and ordained self-supporting ministers in each parish. For me, it's all about partnership. Uh, I've said, uh, for me, three-dimensional partnership. None of it will happen without a partnership with God, without partners in ministry, uh, a ministry team in each parish, and then churches working with one another in mission as well. We've started some of that process already. Uh, Tuesday's Shrove Tuesday lecture uh, with Dr. Paula Gooder was part of laying the theological foundation for all of that work. If we could have the next slide again, please. And uh, you'll know it was announced then as well that our Diocesan Development Day this year on the 5th of October, please note that date, Saturday the 5th of October 2013, we are focusing on mission partnerships. That is the theme behind it all. And then just one more thing as well, if you could have the next slide. Uh, we've set up a little task group as well to begin looking at the wider picture. How do we communicate this with parishes? How do we think about supporting deaneries in their work, facilitating, mentoring, coaching, providing resources to parishes in in all of this. So, Neil, Stephen, thank you ever so much for your patience in all of that. Um, let me start by asking you then a little bit, Neil, if I can, first of all, about the process that you've been going through in Rotherham Deanery, thinking about mission partnerships. Well, thank you, yes. Uh, well, the Rotherham Deanery have actually engaged with mission partnerships over the past couple of years and put together a deanery review team um, a couple of years ago to make recommendations to the deanery synod. Um, um, but they did that by way of actually engaging with the parishes all across our deanery. It's being the largest deanery, Waltham Deanery, and that took some time to do. Um, but the deanery review team actually formed some recommendations to bring before the deanery synod. And as part of that, they then made recommendations in terms of what was then, what was used the term clusters, but now termed mission partnerships. So we now have in place the Deanery Synod voted and was in favour of the mission partnerships, very overwhelmingly positive about that. Um, and uh, we have gone forward uh, in terms of looking at um, sort of taking forward the work of those mission partnerships. So we've gone through a process of discernment, we've gone through a process of actually engagement in all parishes, and actually we are now looking towards um, actually implementation of those recommendations in terms of mission partnerships. Thank you. Um, Adwick Deanery is one of the smaller deaneries, and I think we have the advantage of being slightly more nimble than our brothers and sisters in Rotherham. Uh, we um, carried on a conversation that had started some years ago in the Adwick Deanery, but it took um, particular form in June of this year when the deanery came together to start a conversation about how we meet the demands of mission and ministry. Uh, that was before the bishops came and spoke to us, and, and that was very much a part of our conversation. We met in June, a small group put together some proposals, and then in November there was a meeting, and every church, every member of the clergy, every PCC was represented at that meeting. And there was overwhelming support for the formation of four mission partnerships across the deanery that reflected the different areas, the different relationships different areas have. Um, there was a wholehearted commitment at every level to the process. People could see the benefits of it. 
the main benefit, or the, the main thing that, that brought that about was this sense of relationship that um, Bishop Stephen was talking about earlier. There was very much a sense that the deanery, because of its size, because of work done by previous area deans, had a real relationship one with another. It hadn't worked out in any practical ways, and I think we were just waiting for the opportunity to find a practical way to work out those relationships. Um, as a deanery, we can meet our clergy numbers now with a plan for the future as those numbers change. Um, and that's been very positive for us because it's not that we're playing catch up. We've actually got a real plan looking forwards rather than trying to catch up history with where reality is. Actually, we've got a vision that's beyond our present reality. And that's been a real bonus and benefit of this whole process that's really sharpened our focus. Thank you, both of you. Now, we've already had a comment at this synod that not everybody will necessarily see this as a positive move, asking clergy to, to work across more than one parish to take on more responsibility is a big thing. Um, just talk us through, though, some of the ways that you've uh, argued, if you like, within your deanery, particularly about the positives of this. Well, certainly from a um, perspective of, of Rotham's deanery is that the mission partnerships really have engaged us in a greater sense of our relational aspect of being, really, in terms of our uh, of seeing ourselves beyond our own parochial boundaries and actually looking beyond them. And that's a great positive, I think. And we've found over this past couple of years, in terms of them being in place, is that parishes which may never have actually engaged with each other, maybe, or limited engagement in the past, have actually taken part in proactive engagement, which is a real benefit, I would suggest, of the partnerships actually forming. But there also was really quite important for us in terms of an advantage is that we um, clearly gave guidance that each mission partnership was to um, form in their own uniqueness, because it wasn't going to be, we weren't going to inform partnerships how they should be. They themselves um, created themselves from within. Um, so as area dean, I didn't go around and say, you must do it this way. Um, I just opened the door for them to actually engage with the process within their own partnerships. And it's been a great joy to see how people have responded with that. Um, so it's that relational awareness, but also that awareness of, of sharing uh, resources across parishes and resources, not just in practical resources, but also human resources, but also that, that aspect of being held by each other, uh, in not in, in just practically, but also in prayer as well. That was really significant, that we've actually been able to um, see a positive uh, encountering on not only practical levels, but also spiritual levels across parish boundaries in terms of partnerships. So a real advantage, and it's, it's wonderful to experience it in Rotham, how, how we see it's going. And it's not just because we have extra additional lunch meetings at the rectory at Whiston as a deanery chapter that we've seen a wonderful engagement with chapter as well as the laity across our, our deanery. I think I alluded to, to one of the main advantages as I perceive it in, in the first thing I said. Um, we no longer are having a conversation that is based on fear, uh, a fear of losing clergy or a fear of certain parishes with bizarre worship practices um, looking at taking over parishes with more traditional worship practices. It's about relationship and vision rather than fear. I, I found... Um, the presidential address today to be speaking in exactly the same language. God has blessed us, the deanery, not just us at All Saints or St. Lawrence's or St. Michael's. And there is that sense that parishes are wanting to share that. Um, one of the main advantages as we perceive it is that there has been a parish that's been in interregnum for a year that is forming part of a mission partnership with um, All Saints, Woodlands and Highfields, St. Lawrence's in Adwick. Um, in order to provide clergy cover, to clergy support across the partnership. And that parish is already responding to the change in working practices, the change in relationships that the clergy are involved in. Um, and there are very positive signs, and that's only been in place for a month or so. But also the parishes that are effectively sending, the ones who are contributing to that ministry by me spending less time at All Saints in Woodlands, are seeing it as an opportunity to further develop the ministry and mission of the church where we are, as well as 
in the other parishes in the partnership. There is that sense of a family together, deciding to work together, um, and that sense of community is having an impact in each location as well as across the partnership. Uh, we're still early days yet. I mean, you know, we've got to, to do a lot of work, but I'm already beginning to see the seeds and signs, the shoots of, of those sorts of things <coughs> happening um, very early on. There's a huge advantage in terms of providing that support to parishes who might otherwise discover that they're the ones without the chair when the music stops. Thank you. It's really good to hear the positives uh, and to sense something of your enthusiasm in all of that as well. But nevertheless, this is a huge shift, uh, a whole different way of thinking, if you like, for, for parishes in the way that we've operated uh, in the past. Just a brief word, if you can, on the challenges and how you're trying to overcome those challenges. Yes, I, yes, I begin with a smile because as a born and bred South Yorkshireman from one of our mining communities here in Waltham, I can know, I can share with you my own personal awareness that Engaging with cultural change in our communities um, for many parishes across our diocese uh, may well be actually one of the greatest of challenges. Um, and um, one of the things which certainly we've engaged with our partnerships in, in, in Rotham is that a clear sense of, of maintaining identity within partnerships is actually very important for us as communities across our diocese, um, deanery. Um, but also within that, there is a sense of a realization of that people are uncertain of what mission partnership should look like. Uh, and that is a challenge to actually engage people actually in a new way of looking at, of imagining ministry within our deanery as well. And that is sometimes does create challenges in terms of the uncertainty of what does that mean. And I think it would also be fair to say that those in positions of leadership, both uh, stipendary and lay, um, uh, ordained and lay, I should say, um, also are faced with challenges because it may well be a new way of leadership uh, that is uh, expected in mission partnerships. And to be aware that actually that for some is quite challenging to actually for individuals within a setting whereby they may have been there for many years, actually to reimagining their own ministry within that context take some time to actually work through. Um, so we're not just going from A to B, there is actually a journey along with regard to the leadership growth of a new form of leadership, reimagining ministry. We're very much at the point in the Adwick Deanery where the rubber is hitting the road. Um, and I don't know if we're going to skid or uh, encounter the odd tree en route. Um, within the partnership that I'm intimately involved in, uh, we've already met, um, uh, the, the clergy have already met, to talk about what a partnership agreement might look like. And that's been a very encouraging start to that conversation. But there is a long way to go. Um, and when the realities of the situation finally dawn on some people, when they realise that actually this is going to be a very different way of them having a vicar, a very different way of them engaging in ministry. I, I think we have some potential icy patches ahead and how we negotiate that will be just as important as how we've started. But I think how we've started will be very important in how we deal with those, that it will be about relationship. The biggest challenge is still fear. People are frightened that this will mean that um, somebody is going to walk in and remove their vicar from them. Um, and the only way that I know to counter that fear is through relationship. You cannot fear someone who is your friend. Um, and that for us is the real challenge, is to continue to build those friendships in a way that turns into real action in terms of mission, in terms of ministry, in terms of partnership for mission. Um, I think the name is very well given. Um, and it gives us a good starting point. But so for us in Adwick Deanery, um, we've got a lot of work to do, and I'm hoping we can maintain the momentum. That's the other thing I would say that was a real challenge, is keeping the momentum going. It was hard work keeping that momentum going over meetings in June and uh, through the summer and the, and the autumn, but that momentum has really paid off in keeping people engaged in the process rather than it spreading over years and years and years, although I know in some cases it has to because you're bigger than we are. 
Can I say a huge thank you to you both, not just for your answers today, but for, for your leadership in this whole process as well. Hugely appreciated. A final reminder then that Saturday 5th of October is when we're hoping we'll come together as a diocese to look at this in much more detail and lay out a very clear uh, a path, if you like, for parishes to be able to follow uh, in all of this. So thank you very much.